Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Another godless demon is being exposed and I just praise God every single time. All that money and fame and they use it to cause harm instead of helping humanity. So we have the ex-CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch, Michael Jeffries, who was Abercrombie CEO from 1992 to 2014, was arrested Tuesday as part of a SEX trafficking investigation. The 80-year-old, yes, he's 80 years old, you guys. Disgraced fashion giant boss whose twisted antics allegedly led to more than a hundred men being abused was arrested in West Palm Beach, Florida. He was hit with 15 counts of interstate prostitution and one count of SEX trafficking. The indictment includes Jeffrey's boyfriend, Matthew Smith, who is 61 years old. Okay? as well as a business associate, James Jacobson, who is 71 years old, allegedly recruited men for SEX events and made them have SEX with him in tryouts, were also arrested in the case. According to prosecutors for the Eastern District of New York, oh, they do not play. When they come, they come hard. Jeffries and company fully exploited his Abercrombie power, running a business that was dedicated to fulfilling their sexual desires and ensuring that the international SEX trafficking and prostitution business was kept secret. The feds say the defendants engaged in a quid pro quo from 2008 to 2015, leading men to believe they could score modeling gigs with Abercrombie if they participated in the SEX events. Prosecutors say the parties involve large SEX toys, high-pressured enemas, and the shaving of men's genitals, and attendees were pushed to drink booze and take Viagra and muscle relaxants called poppers. The feds also claim they would intentionally recruit heterosexual men, forcing them to engage in certain SEX acts, even though they were unwilling. Prosecutors acknowledge their investigation was sparked by several lawsuits filed last year against Jeffries and Abercrombie and & Fitch. Those lawsuits claim Jeffries used the company to lure young men into SEX parties by promising them modeling jobs. He orchestrated elaborate SEX events to exploit and sexually abuse young male models during his 22 years being the CEO. The lawsuit also alleged Jeffries had modeling scouts scanned the internet for prey and that some potential models compete to become the next phase of Abercrombie ended up SEX trafficking victims. Abercrombie has reportedly settled some of those lawsuits and announcing the charges Tuesday, the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, Brian Pierce, said to anyone who thinks they can exploit and coerce others by using the so-called casting couch system, this case should serve as a warning. Prepare to trade that couch for a bed in a federal prison. Look at this crib keeper. He was released on a 10 million bond. His boyfriend, Matthew Smith, who was also included in the indictment, was released on a $500,000 bond. As for James Jacobson, who allegedly lured in men to participate in SEX events, was detained. Jeffries and Jacobson are set to be arraigned Friday afternoon at a federal courthouse in Long Island, New York. Look at this sick bastard smiling after posting pawn. This crib keeper looking monster. Look at him. 
you could just see the evil in him. A lot of evil people, the older they get, the more evil they look. Like, look at Ellen DeGeneres. She looks pure evil. Can't even hide it. Tina Knowles, Beyonce's mother, pure witch. Can't even hide the demons within. The older they get, the more demonic they look. They just look, ooh, they look crazy. So anyway, rumor has it that Diddy is snitching. And he's the reason why this guy Jeffries was arrested. He gave the feds the final evidence that they needed. I don't know how true that is. But either way, I'm happy. So is Balenciaga next? Balenciaga better be next. These wicked, demonic companies stop supporting these demons. So yeah, you guys check out the press conference. Good afternoon. I'm Brian Peace, the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York. Thank you all for joining us today. With me today are James Dennehy, Assistant Director in Charge of the FBI's New York Field Office. We have Deputy Chief Carlos Ortiz, Commanding Officer of the NYPD Special Victims Unit. And we have my office's outstanding prosecution team, Aaron Reed, Megan Farrell, and Philip Pilmar. We're here today to announce the arrest and charging of three defendants. Former CEO of Abercrombie & Fitch, Michael Jeffries, Matthew Smith, and James Jacobson on charges of sex trafficking and engaging in interstate prostitution. Powerful individuals for too long have trafficked and abused for their own sexual pleasure young people with few resources and a dream, a dream of securing a successful career in fashion or entertainment. To anyone who thinks they can exploit and coerce others by using the so-called casting couch system, this case should serve as a warning. Prepare to trade that couch for a bed in federal prison. The message from today's prosecution is clear. Sexually exploiting vulnerable human beings is a crime. And doing so by dangling dreams of a future in fashion or modeling or any other business is no different. My office and our law enforcement partners will always prioritize standing up for victims, no matter their gender and no matter how powerful the wrongdoers think they are, we will hold them to account. As we allege in the indictment, between 1992 and 2014, Michael Jeffries was the chief executive officer of Abercrombie and Fitch. Abercrombie was a widely known clothing retailer with stores around the world. Aspiring fashion models knew that a place on one of Abercrombie's iconic ads could be the ticket to success in the modeling industry. But while Jeffries was the CEO of one of the most recognizable clothing retailers in the world, he was using his power, his wealth, and his influence to traffic men for his own sexual pleasure and that of his romantic partner, Matthew Smith. The charging documents describe in graphic and disturbing detail the violent and exploitive acts these defendants perpetrated, for which they will now face justice in a court here in the Eastern District of New York. So here's what's alleged in the indictment. Jeffries and Smith employed James Jacobson to act as a recruiter to find men. Jacobson engaged in, quote, tryouts with men across the world where he would typically pay them to engage in sex acts with him. Following the tryouts with Jacobson, 
Smith would often then personally approve whether the men who were selected would meet Jeffries and Smith. The defendants would fly the selected men to Jeffries and Smith's homes in the Hamptons in New York City or to hotels around the world in such places as England, France, Italy, Morocco, and St. Bart's for the purpose of attending events to engage in commercial sex. But beyond simply hiring men for sex, Jeffries, Smith, and Jacobson used force, fraud, and coercion to traffic those men for their own sexual gratification. For example, as alleged, the defendants employed a referral system and an interview process that did not inform the men of the details of the sex events before they attended, including the full extent and nature of the sexual activity that would be required of the men at these events. They caused the men to believe that attending these sex events could yield modeling opportunities with Abercrombie or otherwise benefit their careers. Smith and Jeffries employed a secret staff to operate these sex events. The staff, the staff ensured that the men signed non-disclosure agreements and handed over their personal items, such as their phones, before the start of the events to maintain the secrecy of these events. The defendants caused the men to believe that not complying with requests for certain acts, sex acts, during the events could harm their careers. The defendants pressured the men to consume alcohol, Viagra, and muscle relaxants known as poppers during the sex events. And they required the presence of staff during the sexual activity and ensured that the men did not leave the sex events until Jeffries and Smith decided that the sessions were over. Also, as alleged, on more than one occasion, Jeffries and Smith either directed others to inject or personally injected men with an erection-inducing substance for the purpose of causing the men to engage in sex acts the men were incapable of engaging in or unwilling to engage in. Additionally, the indictment alleges on more than one occasion when men did not or could not consent, Jeffries and Smith violated the bodily integrity of these men by subjecting them or continuing to subject them to invasive sexual and violent contact by body parts and other objects. As alleged in the indictment, Jeffrey Smith and Jacobson didn't just carry this activity on for a couple of occasions. Their sex trafficking and prostitution enterprise lasted at least from the end of 2008 until early 2015. During that period, the defendants hired dozens of men and transported them to New York and around the globe. They spent millions of dollars on a massive infrastructure to support this operation and maintain its secrecy. This included hundreds of thousands of dollars of cash for commercial sex, prolific amounts of money for staff to run the sex events, money for domestic travel, international travel, hotel rooms, Surface, services from a security company, and Jacobson's salary, among other things. Now, this investigation remains ongoing. Although there are 15 John Doe's identified as victims in this indictment, this interstate prostitution venture encompassed dozens and dozens of men. And I encourage anyone with information about this case, including anyone who was a victim of the defendant's alleged crimes to contact the FBI. 1-800-CALL-FBI. Now, I want to thank the victims who have already come forward for sharing their stories. Prosecutions like this are really impossible without the bravery of victims 
who are willing to report what happened to them to law enforcement. But this office, the Department of Justice, and its law enforcement partners will continue to work tirelessly to protect victims from powerful individuals who use their wealth and their influence to exploit and harm others for sexual gratification. In addition to my team, I'd like to give special thanks to FBI Special Agent Amanda Young and NYPD Detectives Paul Byrne and Antonio Pagan, who have worked hard on this investigation in the pursuit of justice. I'll now turn it over to FBI Assistant Director in Charge, Dan Heath. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon. I'm Jim Dennehy, Assistant Director in Charge of the FBI's New York Field Office. Today's indictment highlights the abhorrent behavior of Michael Jeffries, Matthew Smith, and James Jacobson. What's alleged in the indictment is not only beyond disturbing, dishonorable, and disgraceful, but simply put, it's criminal. In short, these individuals are charged with running a prostitution and international sex trafficking business using a combination of force, fraud, and coercion to induce victims into participating in their illegal operations. The alleged behavior occurred here in New York City and in multiple countries worldwide. The defendants allegedly preyed on the hopes and dreams of their victims by exploiting, abusing, and silencing them to fulfill their own desires with insidious secret intentions. Despite the alleged efforts of Jeffries, Smith, and Jacobson to conceal their crimes, efforts that included threatening victims and requiring them to sign non agreements, among other things, their plan failed. This case is yet another example of individuals using their wealth, power, or reputation to manipulate and control others for their own personal interests. I'd like to speak for a second to the victims in this case and others, both those who have come forward and those we believe are still out there. The FBI and our partners make it our mission to prioritize those who have been victimized by sexual predators. We know victims come from all walks of life. There are neighbors, our friends, and members of our community. We won't allow these criminal acts to go unchecked. We know our agency, however, cannot combat this tr threat alone and we remain committed to investigating and bringing these cases forward to prosecution with our partners. We have dedicated teams ready to listen to you and to advocate for you, and we have victim specialists available to provide the necessary resources you need. If you or someone you know is a victim in this case or any other, the number to call is one 800 call FBI or online at tips.fbi.gov. We are committed to ensuring you not only get the assistance you need to cope, but also that you're aware of your rights. I'd like to thank the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, Breon Peace, and the members of EDNY's Civil Rights Section and Long Island Division's Criminal Section. I'd also like to thank the NYPD's Detective Bureau and its Specialty Enforcement Division and Special Victims Division, as well as the FBI's Miami and Milwaukee field offices. And also, I'd like to thank the dedicated investigators and personnel from the FBI NYPD Child Exploitation Human Trafficking Task Force. Once again, we are waiting to hear from you, and we're here to help you. The number to call is 1-800-CALL-FBI. Thank you. And now I'd like to turn it over to Deputy Chief Ortiz.
Hello, my name is uh, Deputy Chief Carlos Ortiz. I am the commanding officer of the NYPD Special Victims Unit. Uh, good morning, everyone, and, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. The NYPD is committed to fighting for all victims of sexual violence. We stand here today with our federal partners as we continue that mission. Uh, our, coordinated, our continued co collaboration allows us the necessary resources to ensure successful prosecutions. First of all, I want to thank Attorney Pierce, FBI Assistant Director in charge, Dennehy, and their staff, along with my human trafficking unit, led by uh, Captain Chase and Lieutenant Piccarello, for their diligent work in regards to this case. As evident by today's uh, announcement, we, ho we hope our work is able to bring some sense of dignity back to these survivors. The NYPD encourages all survivors of sexual-based uh, sexual violence, including trafficking, to come forward and speak with us, regardless of gender, immigration status, race, or sexual orientation. Our investigators are equipped to handle all reports. Our joint federal teams remain committed to end all human trafficking. The mission and obligation of the NYPD Special Victims Unit is to provide a voice for those that feel unheard. We are here for you. Together with our federal partners, we will continue to fight for the victims of the city and all over the country. Thank you.